Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. In this video, I'm continuing my discussion into um, critical thinking, and in the last section, in section four, I discussed the very, very sort of basic ideas, conceptually, that define um, non-monotonic logic. And it's a mouthful, but it's pretty simple once, once you know, as an instructor, I figure out how I'm going to approach the material. Um, and the idea is, in non-monotonic logic, instead of talking about sort of this binary opposition of truth functionality, meaning a statement is either true or false with respect to validity, um, non-monotonic logic approaches um, statements of the world uh, in terms of consistency, in terms of degrees of truth, in terms of assessing uncertainty. And I went through and I gave uh, quite, a, quite a detailed sort of introductory explanation on um, how, that, how that works. What I'm going to do in this lecture today is uh, go into more detail, specifically on um, real-world applications of non-monotonic logic. The, the thing that I hated the most when I was um, a student was um, not having practical understanding of very, very sort of esoteric ideas. And my idea in this lecture series, as I said before, there aren't any other videos um, on non-monotonic logic, is to hopefully get people interested in the information. Did I bring the book? Um, the book? No, I didn't bring the book. I forgot to bring the book. But the book, um, um, Artificial Intelligence, uh, I think I might have showed it in the last uh, video series, and I definitely have the, the footnotes in the notes. Um, the, the idea of non-monotonic logic, it's, it's, it's sort of intimidating to approach this, the, the subject matter because the concepts are so, it's seemingly difficult, right? And the, the way that it's written among professionals is, is almost inaccessible. The difficulty I had in preparing the lecture and the reason why I, I waited you know, so long and I've done so many other different forms of logic to do non-monotonic is because I didn't have conceptually a pedagogical approach, but I have it now. Um, one last thing before I start, in non-monotonic logic, the idea is, for sort of real-world application, the idea that they always give, they being uh, logicians, always give, typically has to do with sort of the classic example of um, birds, right? Birds, if I were to talk about birds in general as a class of things, um, you would assume that in speaking of birds, I'm talking about an animal, an, uh, an animal that flies, right? Um, so we know that birds fly in a general sense. The idea is, however, that within the class of birds, not all birds fly, okay? So sort of conceptually what we do, and this is sort of the approach that I want to take, and I'm, this is why I'm beginning with this sort of conceptual idea to sort of lay the background as to how you should approach this lecture, is unless, unless otherwise stated. Like, unless I say specifically the bird that I'm speaking about is an ostrich, or the bird that I'm speaking about is a penguin, etc., 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 unless otherwise is stated, within the database of knowledge that you have, when I say the word bird, immediately you think flight. Unless otherwise stated, you should make the assumption that the bird that I'm speaking of has the capability of flight, right? This, this, this idea of a bank of knowledge and um, generalizations that characterize members within that set, within that bank, um, create a degree of flexibility that we use every single day, right? We, we do this every day without even thinking about it. If we're thinking about um, how to get from point A to point B without using Google Maps, right? We, we assume that if we're looking for 27th Street, it's between 28th and 29th, right? And, and on and on. There's many, many sort of boring examples. Um, a lot of this information that, that comes out of this lecture of critical thinking are the foundations, very sort of conceptual foundations, because I don't do circuitry and all that other stuff, but this is the, the logical conceptual foundations for computer science and um, sort of higher order logic, which is, I mean, definitely what we're doing now. And my, my idea is to make it accessible. Um, the classic story that's given, well, I mean, 
bird's flight is sort of classical, non-monotonic. The classic story that, that's given is on page 14. And all you have to do is uh, click the link in the description. It'll take you to the PDF. Just, just uh, download the PDF and follow along. On page 14 um, of my notes, it's called Applying, this is section 4.1, Applying Non-Monotonic Reasoning to Clerical Thinking. Now, I'm not going to read this whole story because it would just take up too much time. I would encourage you, however, to read the story very, very carefully. Right? This is, it's called The Web of Belief, is the technical name for the story. It comes out of, uh, not the story, but for the book. Uh, it comes out of chapter 2 of Quine um, and Julian's the, the Web of the B Belief, and the story is known as the ABC murder story. So I'm not going to go through the ABC murder story. You read the ABC murder story, and it's basically, um, it is the best example to use pedagogically to explain what non-monotonic logic is and also show how this type of logic fits well, well with critical thinking. That's the point of the series. The series is not a logic series, so I'm going to stop non-monotonic logic after this, after section 4.1. The idea is not to go off and do sort of, sort of logical analysis, it's to show you how this particular form of logic and a few um, tools that I'll show you today can help you think very critically and sh also show you the flexibility of the system. Right? So um, you're not really going to fully understand where this is going until you read um, uh, the ABC murder story on page 14 of my notes. Read it and then um, we'll begin the lecture on page 15. Okay, with that, let's, let's begin. So this is critical thinking. And this is section 4.1. This is section 4.1. Okay, so uh, you'll read section 14 and we'll begin on section 15. Alright, what we want to do is, what I want to do, is I want to give you the conceptual foundation with which we make sense of the notation. And I showed you before how we can translate um, symbolically non-monotonic language into sort of conceptual terms, right? How we can say it in a sentence, and I wrote it out and I always do that. The same thing that I'm going to do today, a different version of it, right? Um, before I do that, just remember from the last video that uh, M means is consistent with. Uppercase M means in, uh, is consistent with, and it's the same thing as two colons, right? M, two colons, means the same thing. What we're going to do today is we're going to discard the M and we're just going to use the two colons, which means is consistent with. Again, um, if you haven't watched section 4.0 of this series, watch 4.0 first, come back, and then you'll have a better understanding because I explain it in more detail and use uh, a number of examples to describe this point. Right? So M and the colon means is consistent with. In this section, we'll be, I'll be using just the colons. Okay, so on the top of page 15, this is a justification-based truth maintenance system. It's a mouthful, right? So what we're going to talk about, what I'm going to talk about is what's known as a justification-based truth maintenance system. TMS stands for truth maintenance system. This is a supremely powerful critical thinking tool. I can't say it's the most powerful tool that I've discussed because I mean this is I didn't anticipate the lecture series to go as insanely deep as it has. I mean we've done heuristic uh, modeling, we've done <laughs> um, uh, contradictions, contraries, subcontraries. This you know it's this is uh, you know I like critical thinking stuff and if I'm doing my job well, hopefully I'm I'm bringing you along so that you can make sense of this as well. We're going to talk about justification based truth maintenance systems, um, and you'll see exactly what this is in a moment. Okay, so if you have the following notation, right, A colon B over C, if you have this notation, I have um, how this notation is read. You guys know from all the logic series that I've done, it is absolutely important that you understand how to read the, 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 the language of whatever the system is that we're using. 
within nine months.